Welcome to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County, and this show is about Plymouth County real estate. Although this show is being taped in May, we'll be talking about the April recordings at the Registry of Deeds. So let's go to the numbers, and you're going to see a bar chart of deeds, which basically is sales of property in Plymouth County. The recording activity at the registry for April, there were 755 deeds down from the 759 recorded in March, uh, down 3% from last year's April recordings. For four months of the calendar year, sales are up 1%. Uh, mortgages, people take out mortgages to purchase property. Uh, mortgages are also when people refinance. Uh, there were 1,507 mortgages recorded in April, less than the 1,645 in March, down 17% compared to last year. And over the first four months of the year, mortgages are down 4%. Uh, the interest rates have been bouncing around. And while mortgages are still coming through for sales of property, a lot of people that were refinancing over the last couple of years have chosen uh, that they're fine with their rate and their mortgage, and that's slowed down a little bit. The next uh, chart you're going to see is a foreclosure deeds. A foreclosure deed is when a lender is taking back property from someone. There is, uh, for non-payment usually, 60 foreclosure deeds in April, less than the 66 in March, 18% more than last year, although over the first four months of the year, those are down. 4%. The next image you're going to see is a foreclosure notices. A foreclosure notice is the first time we see something at the registry when someone else, somebody is in trouble. There were 65 foreclosure notices in April, less than the 85 in March. Over the course of the first four months, those are down 26%. So you can see that a lot of lenders have caught up with those people that are uh, behind in their mortgages or didn't pay their mortgage for whatever reason. Many times loss of job, health issues, and you're going to see a listing of foreclosure deeds and notices by community. Uh, Plymouth and Brockton have had the highest number of foreclosures over the past couple of years. Uh, I want to mention a couple of things going on at the registry. Our training room will be open to the public on June 4th. Um, the um, Rochester Historical Society is still uh, in our lobby way. You can see a lot of their great history. We held, held uh, West Bridgewater office hours last month. This month, we're going to the town of East Bridgewater on May 25th at East Bridgewater Town Hall. And uh, we had a, a great uh, event at the registry recently when uh, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, um, Chief uh, Justice Gantz, came to the registry and viewed one of our colonial records where in 1623 the colony court allowed the right to trial by jury. First time in America that was allowed a very historic uh, document. So I have a couple great guests coming on in my next segment, um, both of Jack Conway Real Estate uh, I'm sure they'll do a great job talking about what's happening in the Plymouth County real estate market and um, moving on to the next segment. Thank you. Welcome back to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. In this segment of the show, we always try to do something educational in nature. We've had many different uh, parts of the real estate uh, community on this show. 
from commercial real estate brokers to appraisers to assessors to builders and certainly realtors because realtors are a very important part of the real estate process. I have two great realtors here with me today. I have Monica Donnelly. Welcome, Monica. Thank you very much. And Sue Mulcair. Welcome, Sue. Thank you. Both of Jack Conway Real Estate. So thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having us. So why don't I start with you, Monica? Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and how you got into real estate? Okay. Uh, my name is Monica Donnelly. Um, I've been doing real estate for 18 years now. Um, when I began, a uh, year after I started, I got my broker's license and opened my own company. Um, and I've managed a few different um, franchises. But now I've been with Jack Conway for about eight years. Um, and I manage the Plymouth and the Duxbury offices. So I have about 65 agents um, total that I manage. And it's a busy, it's a busy office, a busy area. Um, there's a lot of activity going on right mm -hmm. now. That's great. And so? I've been in real estate for five years. Okay. Um, prior to that, I was in sales and management, um, then moved to the South Shore, went into real estate. I'm Monica's assistant manager for both Duxbury and Plymouth, but I sell out of the Plymouth office. Great. Well, I have to uh, tell a quick Jack Conway story because he was everyone's favorite person. Yes, he was. <laughs> so when we built our new registry building, which was opened around 2005, um, I had run, run into Jack. I said, oh, Jack, you, you need to come down and see our new building. It's modern. It's, you know, you, you'd really like it. And he goes, you know what? Not only am I going to come down, I'm going to have my whole executive committee <laughs> come down and do a tour. And I said, we'll do an operational tour from the where the deed comes in at the counter, all the way to it being scanned, um, indexed, microfilmed, and, uh, in, and back out the door to people. And we all went to lunch over East Bay Grove. Yeah. <laughs> Had a great time, as you can imagine. Yeah, yeah. So I'll always treasure uh, yeah, him as my first visitor. Yeah. We've done hundreds of uh, tours and visitors since then. Yep, we I'll always remember <laughs> the enthusiasm that he brought yes, to everything. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And the other thing, and I know Monica, you and I had talked yesterday. My uh, w another favorite part of my Jack Conway conversations were he was a sports writer before we uh, got into real estate. That's right. yep. And I remember him saying he covered every single one of Rocky Marciano's title fights. And I always thought that would be a great uh, combination to put that together yeah, yeah. so that people that are sports oriented right, yeah. would really be able to get the feel of what it was like right. in those days. Yep. But, uh, yeah. So let's talk about real estate All right. currently. Um, Monica, how's it been since January? Um, the market has been incredibly active in as much as the, the inventory is really, really low. We have a severe lack of inventory. Um, mostly in that middle bracket of you know lower price to just over the average price. Um, so if you're a buyer in this market, it's a tough market to be in. And as an agent for a buyer, you're telling your buyers to put their best foot forward because they really need to to compete with all the buyers. The inventory is um, lacking severely. So and the flip side, if you're a seller. You have to be ready for your house to sell immediately. If it's priced right, it will sell. So here and there are multiple offers on certain yes, properties. Yes, yeah. we're starting to see that. It's typically been that way, you know, north of Boston in the Somerville, Cambridge, Arlington, Boston area, but slowly trickling down. Yeah, where I, it, if not full price, multiple offers. Yeah, I think I've, I've seen that over the years. Mm -hmm. the, the Plymouth County market in it's 27 communities, and every community has its own particular characteristics. But uh, the, when the Boston market's really, really hot, it it, it takes a, a, a while, but it comes down here, and mm -hmm. and you know those sellers that can't get in uh, to Milton will find their way right. down. In many cases, it is price differences. Right, right. And I think yeah. we're in the middle of a very hot uh, Plymouth County yes. market. And where you're based uh, in Duxbury and 
Plymouth in particular, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sure that it's very competitive. It is very competitive, yeah. yes. Yeah. So uh, why don't you uh, give some guidance to those people out there that are in that uh, competitive environment for buyers, how do they get prepared before they come to you or after they come to you yep. to be part of that uh, competition out there? I think that it's important that buyers note that if they have a house to sell, they're not the most competitive buyer. So when you're going after one house that comes on the market, a technique that listing agents and sellers have employed is deferring showings, and you can do that up to seven days, list a property, defer it to an open house, and then you have an open house with sometimes up to you know, 50, 60, 70 wow. people come wow. through. So then there's this frenzy, of course, and this feeling of sense of urgency. Um, and there may be multiple bids. And you could, in fact, overbid and still not get the property. Therefore, you have to be the most unencumbered buyer. You can't be the one with a house to sell because there's probably five others to choose from. So I know it's a scary thing sometimes to say, OK, I'm going to put my house on the market and I don't have anywhere to go yet. But the best way to be a competitive buyer, if you're also a seller, is to get your house listed. You can make it known that it's contingent upon you finding your own suitable housing. Um, but the further you get along in that process, the better a buyer you become. So if your house is listed, at least sometimes they're not even listed. You're never, in this market, going to get that, that property on the other side. So if you have it listed, if it's under contract, the home inspection is done, you're at commitment. The further along you are, the better buyer you are. So you want to add to that? Well, I just had clients that sold their house rather quickly because of the market and then couldn't find a place to buy because of the market and they had to find a rental, which the rental market is also very tough right now as well. And given that we're a seaside communities, most of a lot of the area, the rentals then come weekly rental in the summer. So to find a short term rental, and they finally did, but it's, it's very difficult. You have to be ready to, you know, consider options. So Mark, I'm, t I'm told by uh, people that because of the advancement in technology um, that uh, buyers are much more aware what's going on in the marketplace that they have the ability through different websites to preview and yeah. see and yep. you know want you talk a little bit about that yeah so the Technology has come so far, and it's, it's, um, it can be a pro and a con sometimes. Um, you can get a lot of information online. We used to be the kind of keepers of information. We had our MLS books right. or our MLS, and um, now the information is out there. I think that the importance of a realtor is to kind of extrapolate that data for their clients, because you can go on a website and get a, an estimate of home value that's based on pure data feed. But it doesn't take into account condition of a property. It doesn't take into account location of a property. Um, so a lot of consumers latch on to those types of um, algorithms that are available online. And it's the realtor's job really to guide them through and show them actual comps and actual conditions and bring them into the property so they can see and feel the properties. And I think that that's where there could be a disconnect when people think they can rely entirely on the technology, um, but you kind of need that personal touch as well. So, so I, I am also told that uh, pre-approval letters are absolutely even more important in this era absolutely. than previously. What else? Talk about pre-approval so people understand what that means and other tips you might have right. uh, to prepare um, buyers. Right. So. As a buyer, it, there may have been a time in the market where buyers could just call up and say, I'd love to go look at this property. Um, and, and the agent would take them and the seller would be open to it. Now, the buyer has to be qualified to look at that property. So they need to go to a lender, uh, whether it's a bank or a mortgage company, and get a letter that's based on you know, their income and their finances that will tell us 
the range they're qualified for. And oftentimes those letters will even say it's contingent on the sale of their home, that type of thing. Um, so and understandably, sellers don't want to consider an offer unless it has that pre-approval letter because it's the market's so tight right now. And they also, well, a, a lot of, not that I agree with it, but a lot of buyers are waiving things like home inspections um, to put themselves in better light with the seller. So. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, that, a that's lot of that. A lot of risk in, in some cases, I would bet, but right. I guess they had, a lot of risk. What they have to do to get to the head of the crowd. When you, know? you have a buyer that's put in five offers on five different properties and they've lost out five times, uh -huh. sometimes they want to say, Will, we have seen things called escalation clauses where someone is willing to pay X amount of dollars higher than the, the best bona fide other offer. Um, or like mm -hmm. Sue said, waive a home inspection contingency, which we don't advise as a buyer's agent, or um, waive the mortgage appraisal portion if they're qualified to do so with a conventional loan. Which we also don't advise. Yeah, we don't advise as a buyer's agent. So, so obviously, I, I mentioned before, Plymouth County is very diverse, and it seems to me, from what I see coming through the registry, that Plymouth and Duxbury has um, differences. Do you want to talk Absolutely. about that? Absolutely. Yeah, it's a very different market. Um, yeah. The inventory in Plymouth is low, but it's even lower in Duxbury. The amount of transactions that are coming through are very few and far between. Um, the price average, of course, is, is much different as well, the average sale price. Um, it's kind of a little bit more, they're both waterfront communities, but Duxbury has a, a high-end waterfront um, type of uh, price structure as well, wow. so smaller community. So uh, let's talk a, a little bit about uh, sellers. So mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of people out there watching the show today that might um, finally be ready to sell and either move up or move down in the market. Uh, sure. could give uh, them some advice as uh, obviously it's the time to sell. Right, and I, I, I was Tips that to you can say. give them to how to get ready to sell. A lot of people have thought um, all year round that they should wait for the spring market, but actually the market's been great since, you know, th the winter till now so I would say yes um, it's a great time to sell be prepared to have a place to go uh, again if it's in that price bracket Monica talked about they sell quickly and then sometimes the seller finds themselves in a position now what am I going what am I going to do you know where am I going type of thing um, and I and again in that price bracket it could happen in days, days, you know, get listed one day and have an offer the next, or multiple offers, as Monica said. So, um, obviously, when somebody approaches you and, and wants to list their property, you, as, as a seller, you would obviously view the property and give them some advice as what are the, nobody really wants to put a lot of money into something before they right. sell, won't you? give some tips uh, right. what, what you usually tell people to look to do. So depending on the condition of the property or what, what um, price bracket it might be in, there may be some work that needs to be done. I typically don't recommend a ton of work to be done to a property, meaning put in a lot of money because you're not going to get it back out dollar for dollar. Um, and especially when it comes to cosmetic things, you might be focusing on something that your ultimate buyer, it's not important to them. So maybe it's better to, at that point, wait for the home inspection or the, the offer and see what's important to that particular buyer. However, if you're in a price range where your buyer may very well be an FHA buyer or a government-backed loan buyer, the appraisal requirements may dictate that the peeling paint has to be fixed in the property, or if there are any safety issues, those should be addressed up front because they're going to come up and they could prohibit the lender from lending the money based on the appraisal, like missing handrails, broken glass, right. that type of thing. So I, I always like people to give their contact information twice during the segment. Do you want to share your contact information? So how to reach you? Oh, sure. Um, so my email is 
S Mulcare at Jack Conway, and that's M U L C A R E. My cell phone is 617 943 3245. Monica? Um, my email is M Donnelly, M D O N N E L L Y, at jackconway.com, and my phone number is 508 245 3005. So, in our last uh, several minutes, let's have you bring out your crystal balls and <laughs> tell our viewers and me because I'm always uh, interested in people's perspectives. Where are we going over the next uh, number of months as we get through the summer and come to the fall of 2017? Yep. I think, yeah, sure. Oh, I'm sorry. I think every year we, I just came from the Medfield market. I was managing up there for Jack okay. Conway. And like you were talking about, it's trickling down to this market. So I see the low inventory kind of continuing. We still have to kind of rebuild our stock of homes for sale on the market. And that's going to keep prices, I think, where they're at. Although units are down, average sales price is slightly up in most communities in Plymouth County. So I feel like that will sustain us as far as sales average price. Um, interest rates are still historically low. They're maybe a little bit higher than they were once, but they're still in the big picture great. So I think that the inventory needs to rebuild and while this inventory is low, we're gonna see the same type of market. Right. And Sue, your thoughts? Well, I, I did do a few numbers and sure. as Monica says, the average sale price is up 9.2%. It's a lot. Um, days on market um, has reduced 24%. So that's how, sure. so prices are up, houses are moving faster, but again, not enough inventory. Right. And how do you see us going through the summer into the, into the fall? I, I don't see um, any changes. I, I just think it's going to continue at this pace. Right. Yeah. So um, why don't you share your contact information one more time? Okay, it's Monica Donnelly, 508-245-3005, and my email, mdonnelly at jackconway.com. And so? Sue Mulcair, S-M-U-L-C-A-R-E, at jackconway.com, 617-943-3245. Uh, so thank you again for coming on the Thanks show. Thanks for having us. I hope thank you, you have a great uh, summer of sales. Yes. doesn't really feel like summer yet. I know. It's getting changing. there, getting there. We are getting there. <laughs> Thanks, Monica. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. So. you. Great. Thanks, Thanks for Take coming care. on the Thanks show. Thanks for having us. Did you know parking over tall, dry grass can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. So I want to thank Monica and Sue from Jack Conway for the great job they did in advising buyers and sellers uh, what they should be doing in this very hot Plymouth County marketplace. Um, in this segment of the show, we always try to do something a little lighter in nature and share some of our history, particularly from our Plymouth County Registry of Deeds Notable Land Record Collection. Uh, the holidays in May, May Day and Law Day were May 1st, Cinco de Mayo the 5th, the uh, wonderful Kentucky Derby on the 6th of May, Memorial Day will be the 29th. So I'm gonna bring up an image of a very f famous Plymouth County person, all in light of the fact that recently uh, circuses came to an end as they were done traditionally. Uh, for many years, people would watch circuses come to town. They'd come and watch with the, as the animals unloaded, as the big top went up. Uh, P.T. Barnum's Barnum and Bailey Circus was certainly a great part of that. Uh, Tom Thumb, uh, one of his very famous acts early on, um, was a resident of Middleborough. He had married a longtime famous resident, Lavinia Bump. Uh, they were both part of P.T. Barnum's American Museum in New York City. Uh, they were married. Uh, General Tom Thumb uh, was given uh, that name. His original name was Charles Stratton. They became one of his most famous uh, business ventures, along with the legendary Jumbo the Elephant. Tom Thumb memorabilia can be found Tom and Lavinia can be found in the Middleborough Historical Museum. Uh, Tom Thumb died in 1883 
and Lavinia died in Middleborough also in 1919. The next image you're going to see is of a very famous photographer, Frederick William Glazier, uh, was a masterful photographer who captured the essence of the traveling circus. He was born in Adams, later moved to Brockton, uh, moved to Bridgewater. Uh, he had a studio in Brockton, but he loved covering events like the Brockton Fair and uh, circus events. He loved recording the pandemonium of the circus arrival, and he's admired for his intriguing subjects uh, that uh, were part of the circus, particularly in a bygone era. He recorded things like the circus in the Wild West show. He had a number of uh, books put together of his exhibits, some of which were exhibited down at the John and Mabel Ringling Museum of Art in Sarasota, Florida, if you're ever down there and want to go by, and a very good memory. Uh, in honor of Memorial Day, um, I'm, we're going to show an image of Brockton City Hall. Brockton City Hall was built as a memorial to veterans and those who lost their lives in the Civil War. It was located on the site of the 12th District School back when Brockton was known as a parish of North Bridgewater. Um, City Hall is located on School Street. Because of that, it was built under a local architect, uh, Wesley Ling Minor, in the Victorian Romanesque style. Brockton City Hall was dedicated in 1894. Uh, there's a wonderful plaza that they've recently renovated that has um, uh, statutes and monuments, particularly those to the firefighters who lost their lives in the Strand Theater fire, in a plaque for Billy McGonigal, a Brockton person who invented the catcher's mitt and managed back-to-back -back, uh, baseball teams to American Association and National League championships. The team he managed was the Brooklyn Bridegrooms, who then became the Brooklyn Dodgers and are now known after they moved west as the LA Dodgers. So I want to thank uh, PAC-TV for allowing me to produce this show and share it uh, with uh, people of Plymouth County. I want to thank uh, Dave Antoine and uh, my assistants at uh, Plymouth County Registry, Lorna Green Baker and Christine Richards, for helping me put this show together. We've had a great uh, new intern here helping out today, Beth Ann Keen, and by all working together and putting this show together in a good way, we keep people informed of issues and concerns for what is people's, for most people, their most valuable asset, their home. So enjoy Memorial Day. Hopefully summer starts to turn warmer, and I'll see you next month. Thank you.